In the summer of 2009, my aunt Annette and Uncle Rich were digging out a new pond in their front yard in the small town of Portland, Michigan, a place where I grew up. While digging, they unearthed something a bit unexpected, the bones of a mastodon. Researchers believed that the mastodon was about 10,000 years old and had been killed by Native Americans. Pictured here is my sister and me with the creature's femur. This is another image of the femur bone, now lying on its side. This was the largest bone that the excavators found. Upon finding the bones, my aunt and uncle contacted the University of Michigan to see what they could do. U of M sent people to excavate the area, but once funding ran out, Annette and Rich continued the job themselves. These are some of the shards and broken pieces of bone, as well as smaller bone bits. These were some of the rib bones found. The length of the unbroken ribs could easily dwarf the human arm. Pictured here are some of the vertebrae and spinal discs of the mastodon. These were some of the pieces that my aunt and uncle were most proud of finding, as they had almost a complete set. What Annette and Rich were most hoping to find, though, were the teeth of the mastodon, but unfortunately, none were uncovered. Aunt Annette and Uncle Rich donated all of the bones they found to U of M for further analysis and eventual display. One person asked Annette why she wasn't going to keep a bone as a souvenir. She responded, what would I do with it? Have a femur for a coffee table? A rib on the mantle? This is a piece of the mastodon's tusk. Although splintered and broken, the piece was still incredibly smooth and surprisingly heavy. The sheer weight of this single shard certainly shed light on just how heavy the whole tusk must have been. Pieces of mastodon bone weren't the only Ice Age artifacts found. This was a piece of wood incredibly well preserved. The U of M scholars were able to tell us that, as indicated by the markings, this wood was once chewed on and used by a creature similar to the modern beaver. Of course, this prehistoric beaver was the size of a modern bear. Here is an image of one of the later bones excavated by my aunt and uncle. It was yet another femur, but obviously broken, unlike the other femur found. An image of Uncle Rich and some of the family members out helping with the excavation of the would-be pond. The large area dug out for the pond helped contribute to the number of bones found. A few more bones were uncovered after our visit to the site, but not many. More bones would have probably been found had they continued to expand the size of the pond, but my aunt and uncle decided to leave further exploration for later years. They still wanted their pond, preferably without a completely torn up front yard. Naturally, the members of my family took a picture with the femur, just as a number of families in the area were coming out to do. Although not every member of my family was present, it was still an amazing experience to have, and proof that a big extended family affords some of the best connections. Thank you for listening to my story. Photographs were taken by Devin Haddis and Annette Schneider. Background music is Reverie, Small Theme, by Ghost.